Day one of NFL free agency is practically in the books. However, it's not over quite yet. In fact, we're still getting signings hitting the timeline as we speak. Roster moves. Joe Mixon just got released. All different types of things. So we'll keep one eye on the Twitter machine for those notifications. So if any 49ers news drops, we will get it to you first, but we're going to recap what the San Francisco 49ers have done today when L needs room to improve, haven't addressed specific needs. We're going to talk about all those different types of things. So before we get into that, and of course, we're going to talk about the new 49ers players uh, that will be suiting up this year. But before we get into that, drop an SDS in the chat, smash, smash that like button, and let's get after it. Let's go. Smash that like button if you haven't already. Love to see it. All right, what is going down, gang? We are doing a bit of a free agency recap. We got Instagram in the building. We got YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, X, whatever the hell you want to call it, Twitch. You know the vibes. We're streaming everywhere. So I already talked about it on the intro, but to catch you guys up to speed on Instagram, we are going to do a little bit of a free agency recap, starting with everything that happened this morning all the way through to the signings that we got. Let's talk about it. Let's react to it. Good, bad, indifferent, don't like it, not enough. We're going to talk about it all right now. So the the, the morning started with um, news that the 49ers – we're bringing in Ray Sean Jenkins, former safety for the Jaguars. Now, we haven't seen any movement there, but we are expecting something to go down. So uh, nothing has happened yet, um, but there could be uh, something happening in regards to to safety so we'll figure out and see what that is but that's how we started our morning was with that then we found out that uh fred warner has restructured a sizable portion of his contract which is going to translate into additional cap space so shout out to fred for one, uh, you know, going through with the restructure, probably converting that signing, uh, that base salary into signing bonus, uh, clearing up some cap. And also, shout out to Fred, becoming a, a dad today. Shout out Papa Fred. Uh, shout out to Sydney. Um, man, uh, you, I could see they had a little C-section action. Uh, I know all about that, so I, I can understand how, how nerve-wracking that can be. So shout out to those guys uh, for, for the, the birth of their healthy baby boy. Um, and I, I absolutely love that the first thing that Fred Warner's out here talking about is his, uh, his 40 time uh, for the combine. He's already speaking it into existence, so... Uh, 49er Fred Warner, uh, his son already being molded to be one of the best. So shout out to Fred. Um, uh, also of course, shout out to Fred for helping us get a little bit of cap space as well. That's always nice. Um, let's see what other updates the, the first signing of the day. I don't think we talked a whole lot about it, uh, but the 49ers re-signed quarterback brandon allen one of the sneakiest moves of the entire day in the nfl 
49ers get QB2 uh, in the building. And uh, <laughs> But it does sound like uh, Sam Darnold will be potentially targeted for the Vikings job because Kirk Cousins is now on the Atlanta Falcons. Kirk O'Chains got absolutely paid, absolutely cashed out. So there's a job open in Minnesota. Uh, Kyle, some Kyle Shanahan ties with the O'Connell offense. Definitely could see Sam Darnold heading over there. But if Sam Darnold goes over there, then we might be getting a comp pick for Sam Darnold. But as it stands right now, currently two quarterbacks on the roster. The GOAT, Brock Purdy, and um, Brandon Allen. And I like Brandon Allen. Uh, I like him for that role of being a backup veteran uh, voice in the room. Uh, I, I don't know enough about Brandon to be like, I feel comfortable with him rocking out for six games as a starter with us. But I like the presence. I like I like what he can bring to the room. Um, it'll be very interesting to see what the 49ers do at quarterback, considering they need two more arms by the time training camp comes around. So that will be part of the discussion. I don't know if they make another move to go after and get a veteran quarterback to add to that room and then draft or go with a free agent. It remains to be seen, but that's what we currently are up against as it stands right now. We already talked about Fred Warner um, and all that good stuff. We talked about Sam. Uh, we had Charlie Warner get signed away. Um, he signed a three-year, $12 million deal with the Atlanta Falcons. So that means tight end two and three. I would say are up for grabs. So as it stands right now, the 49ers have Kittle, Latu, and Willis under contract. I don't believe Ross Dwelly is under contract. And obviously, Charlie Warner will not be coming back through those doors. Shout out to Charlie Warner getting a $12 million contract on 11 receptions through four seasons. What a legend. What a legend. Turning 11 catches into 12 milli. We see you, man. And again, that is a massive emphasis on his ability to be a blocker. But that means the 49ers lose a very good blocker, um, and it remains to be seen how they will go about replacing Charlie Warner. Is that guy already on the roster with Latu, with Willis? Or are the San Francisco 49ers potentially going to look at free agency or the draft? We'll see. Um, I already see a lot of people asking a ton of questions in the chat about Kyle Juszczyk. So I let, let, I'm going to, I'll address it. I'll address it. And I'm going to leave it up to the mods in the chat. I'm going to leave it up to you guys to police yourself after this, uh, because it's a common question I've seen on lives already. So the situation with Kyle Juszczyk. We found out late last night, according to Adam Kaplan of PFN, that the 49ers have approached Kyle Juszczyk about taking a significant pay cut. And the reason why that puts us on high alert is because that is the same thing that the 49ers approached Eric Armstead with. And as a result of that conversation, Eric Armstead I guess, asked for his release because he wasn't going to play on a severely reduced salary. So that is why Eric Armstead got released. So what was reported late last night was the fact that Juice was approached, approached about the same thing. And as it currently stands, 
we don't know what the outcome is of that conversation. Obviously, one of the outcomes could be cut. Another outcome could be he accepts and plays on a reduced salary. I think I speak for everyone, for the most part, um, outside the business side of football, we want Kyle Juszczyk back. I want Kyle Juszczyk back. Um, I think he's very imperative to what the 49ers do in the run game. Granted, I do acknowledge the fact that his snap counts have kind of been decreasing year over year. And being used less and less, I acknowledge that. Um, but that doesn't mean I don't believe that he is not uh, pretty crucial right now to what the 49ers are doing. And he could be used even more. You know, I really do think that. Um, I think, I also think uh, an interesting aspect with uh, Charlie Warner signing elsewhere is well potentially if we are running way less fullback sets and we're going more three wide and four wide but we're still utilizing the two tight end sets can Kyle use check effectively be tight end two I I'm just saying he obviously can't be tight end two when you need the fullback on the field, but if they're getting away from those personnel groupings, going more towards three wide, more towards two tight sets, can you use him as the second tight end? Kind of the H-back role? I don't know. How, how do we get Juice more involved? That would be my question. Um, I would love to see Juice stick around, but the point being of why we're even talking about Juice is because... Today was the um, the fake troll accounts Super Bowl. Um, obviously, everyone is checking Twitter. Like, like if you're like me, I've looked at every single notification that's come across my phone today, and I wouldn't be shocked if we were in the thousands when it comes to notifications. So, because of that. And news is happening so fast. For example, just now as we are speaking, Damian Lewis, free agent guard, just signed with the Panthers, four-year, $53 million deal. That just happened just now. And just before that, the commander signed Brandon McManus. And just before that, uh, we found out that Joe Mixon is getting released. And just so the point being is there's so many notifications going off right now. You had someone impersonate Matt Mayoko. Uh, they made their account look exactly like Matt Mayoko. And they said Kyle Juszczyk has been released. That's why you compound that with the news from last night. Fake account saying that Kyle Juszczyk has been released. That looks like Matt Mayoko. And you have everyone freaking out asking about um, why has Kyle Juszczyk been released? So if you see these comments in the chat, please, uh, this is going to be my one and only time addressing it. Kyle Juszczyk has not been released per actual sources. Um, we're still in a holding pattern in that whole situation. So keep in mind that still exists. We don't know just yet, but if anyone asks, has Kyle Juszczyk been released? He has not. Um, that was a fake account. I also saw a lot of people asking. Um, I actually saw people posting and telling me, like, wait, didn't we sign Daniil Hunter? Nope, we did not sign Daniil Hunter. Um, Daniil Hunter is not a San Francisco 49er. That was, yet again, uh, more fake accounts doing their troll business um but the player that we did sign let's talk about that let's talk about the two defensive ends that the san francisco 49ers did sign and that starts with free agent edge rusher leonard 
Floyd. So, Leonard Floyd, 49er, two years, $20 million. So, effectively, you can do the math pretty easily, $10 million uh, per year on average. Uh, I saw, I think he's right around 30th ranked in regards to uh, edge rushers being paid. Uh, one of the positives about Leonard Floyd is really, I would say the arguably best four years of his career have come in the last four years. He is a little bit older. He's uh, 31 and a half. Um, he has great length, uh, great first step, get off, great, great pass rush moves. And again, um, with guys like this, the combination of length and, and, and being able to hand fight from the defensive edge spot is very, very good, man. Whole, whole bunch of offensive linemen signing in the middle of the night. Nothing regarding to the San Francisco 49ers. I apologize to all my 49er fans who are clamoring uh, for O-line. Uh, haven't got it just yet um, outside of the guys that the 49ers have signed. Um, so when you're looking at the Leonard Floyd deal, you're looking at a guy who's basically put up double around double digit sacks the last four years in a row i think it was something like ten and a half nine and a half nine ten and a half so he's he's put up quality production um especially for that price range so i think that's the way you got to look at it obviously not brian burns brian burns uh gets traded to the new york giants today uh in a laughable amount of uh, of capital given up um the panthers really had two firsts and a second on the table from the los angeles rams just to keep him in a year in which they won two games and then turn around and trade him for a second and a fifth uh listen it was always going to be a long shot for Brian Burns to the 49ers. I always knew that. That's just my guy. But the Panthers, uh, wow. Uh, what a terrible, terrible move um, to, to sit on Brian Burns, just not to pay him and then trade him for barely nothing. I couldn't believe it. Uh, but Brian Burns gets paid second. Highest paid defensive end in the NFL and in NFL history. Um, shout out my guy BB baby. Hey, I've been telling I've been telling everyone from the jump that's he's him. A lot of people didn't want to believe me. He's him. Uh, but congrats to him. Obviously, didn't come to the 49ers. Um, but the 49ers go get they go and get Leonard Floyd. Um, while that news came out that we got Leonard Floyd, there was some additional news that came out and it is regarding Jawan Jennings. So, um, with Jawan, um, he got hit with the second round tender. Um, he is a restricted free agent. So the San Francisco 49ers technically own his rights however any team can come and negotiate with Jawan jennings so if a team feels that they like Jawan jennings so much that they are willing to not only negotiate a new contract with him but also give up a second round pick if the 49ers opt to not match said contract i don't know that's going to be that's going to be interesting to see i'm not sure that there is a team 
right now that would pay Jawan, like let's say four year, 40 million. I'm just throwing a number out there. Paying him uh, a long term deal and then giving up a second round pick for him. Um, as you as you could see, Brian Burns just went for a second round pick. So um, Jawan Jennings for a second round pick. That to me makes me feel like he will be a 49er next year. It, I don't know how I feel about the long term uh, outlook of that because I think it's important that the 49ers do have to pay Brandon Ayuk. Uh, let's not let's not forget about BA. Um, let's not forget about that. Um, so I don't know what the long term plan is for JJ. I think we all love JJ. And we all want JJ here, but I don't know what the long-term plan looks like for him, but it sounds like he will be playing with the San Francisco 49ers at about $4.89 million, which for JJ, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I think Kendrick Bourne's getting paid like $10 million a year over like three years, four years. Hey, shout out Kendrick Bourne, dude. Uh, Kendrick Bourne has has figured out how to I don't, uh, fleece the, the the Patriots. Not that like Kendrick doesn't deserve it, but KB getting paid by the Patriots. Um, he got he got paid twice. Um and then you, if you want to compare that, if you want to compare what he got paid and what he produces to kind of like JJ, not, I mean, they're pretty similar. I mean, it, when you think about their time with the 49ers, uh, I think KB had a phenomenal year last year before he went down with the ACL and was really on pace for a big season. Um, he got hurt and he still got paid off getting hurt. Uh, but Jawan in that very similar role, getting paid less than five. Really, really say, I would say is, is a bargain. And me saying that the Patriots are getting fleeced by KB isn't saying that I don't value KB or KB isn't worth it. They are just paying a very high amount for KB. That's all I'm saying. I think KB's the GOAT. Got to talk to KB at uh, the Super Bowl uh, during Radio Row. Uh, he's a vibe. I love KB. Um, but they are paying. They are paying for KB uh, quite a bit. And um, coming off the ACL at the age, it's like, okay, that's fine. Um, but the point being is that I think it makes uh, JJ and his value look even better so i like that and then uh oh another update i know a lot of 49er fans were hoping for a aziz al shair reunion um but unfortunately it wasn't the reunion that we were looking for aziz al shair signs a three-year 34 million dollar deal with the texans and he goes and reunites with um, D'Amico Ryans. Um, honestly, I could see it in the chat. I think we all kind of had the same thought process. Is We all thought Aziz was going to sign with D'Amico as a rookie. Or not a rookie. Excuse me. Last year when he became a free agent. Um, he signed a, I think he signed like a one year, $6 million deal with, uh, the Titans in his first year as a starter. I think he broke the Titans single season record for tackles. I think Aziz had like 176 tackles last year, um, which is insane in his first full year as a starter. And then he is able to take that and get a 
quality payday to go be the the mic in D'Amico's offense. So good. Shout out, shout out Aziz. Uh, my guy Sean says, Brad, can you talk about Matos? Uh, perfect timing because he is next on the docket. Uh, the 49ers uh, weren't done with just Leonard Floyd. The 49ers go out and sign Yater Gross Matus from the Carolina Panthers. So, before I get into my analysis of Yater Gross Matos, who signed a two-year, $18 million deal. Are you guys surprised to see that the 49ers targeted nothing but edge on day one of free agency? I just want to, I want to pull the chat. I just want to pull the chat. Chat, talk to me. Are you guys surprised that defensive line has been the key thing here that the 49ers are going after. So YouTube says not surprised. So far, the early answers on Instagram are surprised, but it's coming in a little bit more split. I'm not surprised at all. In fact, this, <laughs> remember, I'm the guy that you have been yelling at when I said, hey, we the 49ers need to focus on defensive line. <laughs> and a lot of people don't didn't like that. And they said, you know what? You, you don't know. You don't know this team. <laughs> we need offensive line. Not defensive line. Well, sure enough, the San Francisco 49ers go out. For me, Edge was the number one need on this team. And that is even dating back to last year. That is even dating back to before the deadline, before they traded for two defensive ends. And so, Obviously, when you look at the 49ers defensive line heading into free agency, only five guys under contract. I'm not surprised. Not surprised at all that the 49ers are going after defensive line. In fact, it's to be expected. And so now we started today with five total defensive linemen under contract. We end the day with seven. Okay. What well, better? better um still plenty of room to go but hey two defensive ends and let's talk about yater gross matos so one of the reasons why i'm really coming around to yater gross matos is initially when i heard it i'm thinking of him as a, a speed rusher i think in my brain when I'm looking at defensive ends for the San Francisco 49ers, I'm thinking of edge rusher. I'm thinking of pure speed. I, it's just been something that I've I've wanted on the opposite side of Nick Bosa since D Ford uh, got hurt and, and hasn't been able to be that for us. We've really missed that speed and burst element on the opposite side. And so that's just kind of where my head's been at. And so when I saw Yader Gross Matos, I know I knew who he was coming out of Penn State. I knew him a little bit because he landed, ironically enough, in Carolina with Brian Burns. So I was like, why are the Panthers taking a defensive end in the second round at pick 38? Are they trying to replace my guy, BB? So naturally... I, I did some research, but I mean, when you look at him, 6'5", 265 pounds, 26 years old, and you look at his sack production, I think that's where a lot of people go. They go straight to the stat sheet. Yeeter, thank you. My pronunciations are terrible, so please bear with me. And if you want to give me phonetic spelling of how to pronounce it, that would be ideal, and I appreciate you. 
Um, but last year was his highest sack production um, out of his whole career, and that's four and a half sacks. Before that, it was two and a half. The year prior, three and a half. And his rookie season in 2020, he had two and a half sacks. So overall through four years, 13 sacks. Um, definitely doesn't come across as a a pure pass rusher but that being said i actually think that's a good thing i actually think this could turn out to be one of the more underrated signings uh when it's all said and done because i think of guys like arden key i think of guys like charles omenahue you think of the success that those guys have had with Chris Kosurik, it's really hard not to look at him on tape and not see those same traits that make uh, this a potential, um, actually could be an impactful move. And when you also compound that with the fact that Eric Armstead isn't here anymore, and you now have a guy who's 6'5", 265, rock solid, and can rush the passer over the guard, I see that being his pass rush role. Also, uh, beyond that, I also see that he could be Cleveland Farrell. Cleveland Farrell is super underrated this year for the San Francisco 49ers because of what he did in the run game and setting the edge. He doesn't get enough credit for what he did. Uh, Cleveland was a dog. Cleveland, and I know you guys felt his loss when he left. Uh, with the injury in the playoffs. But Cleveland was a dog for the 49ers. And you can add him to that list of like, but but Yaters got more length than Cleveland. Yaters got longer arms than Cleveland. And I think I think Yater can really potentially maybe even put on some weight. And if you rush him primarily uh over the t over the dt out of the three tech he could present a big time challenge for guards guards typically have shorter arms guards typically don't move as well on an island and you could absolutely try to get yeeter in one-on-one -on -one matchups against guards and i mean you've seen the way he moves his hands he's got swipes he's got spins he's got rips He's got some counter moves. Again, he doesn't have that, I would say, pure speed off the edge as a pass rusher. But if you can bring him and rush him off the guard, I think that's a spot for him. Uh, Harris says, is he good in the run game? I think that's the thing that got me most excited. I posted a clip. Um, I'm showing it on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter right now. But I've also posted this clip onto Instagram. Um, when you watch this three minute clip, predominantly the highlights are him making plays in the run game, setting the edge, um, pursue angles. Uh, I, I think that's his best. I think that, I think that's his best attribute is how he plays in the run game. Um, so you think about it, you put this guy in the wide nine. You put him out there against tight ends, like even on cue, you just see him bench press a tight end. You see him shoot down the line of scrimmage. Um, he's got a motor. Uh, again, I don't see him as your prototypical pass rusher, but uh, when it comes to motor in the run game, that's definitely a guy I think. Um, is actually a signing that my first initial gut was like, uh, 
It was like, I was like, that is the wrong Panther. But after giving it some time and, and watching some of his tape and, or just some of the clips where you can at least pull traits, he has, he has quality traits in the run game. Um, can he, can he transition that into being a pass rusher? We'll find out. Um, again, he doesn't have a ton of production, but I think this is the uh, kind of guy who's going to do the dirty work, who's going to do the things that aren't going to get a lot of hype. They're not going to get a lot of, you know, it's not going to be a, a big time stat producer, but sometimes you don't need those guys. Sometimes you guys, you just need guys who are going to do their job so that others can clean up. And that's what I think of, you know, um, Charles Omenihue. I thought Charles Omenihue could have had, uh, Charles Omenihue could have had like eight sacks that season, um, that last season he played with us, but. He just wasn't able to get home, but everyone else around him was cleaning up. Bosa got sacks. Uh, Drake Jackson got some sacks. Eric Armstead got some sacks. So it's like Charles Amenehue was moving the quarterback off the spot and everyone else was cleaning up. So that's kind of like where I envision him. I see him as the dirty jobs, you know, that show Mike Rowe. Uh, dirty jobs on Discovery Channel. Um, job needs to get done. It's not going to get a lot of hype, not going to get a lot of love, but that seems like the guy who's going to do it. Also, on top of that, um, I saw this video uh, that was posted back when he was in college, and man, he he's a he is a guy that I'm officially rooting for. Um, apparently, he lost his father. Um, to a drowning accident i think around two years old and then uh he lost his i think older brother got struck by lightning at one of their uh baseball games and and he died instantly um so that's a guy who's had uh a lot of adversity off the field and you know after kind of hearing his story kind of hearing him talk about it i'm like damn it's really hard not to root for this guy so i'm a fan i'm a fan i'll be 100 honest first initial reaction didn't do much for me but after Looking into the tape a little bit further, understanding him better as a player on the field, and then kind of hearing his story. Um, yeah, I like this guy. I like him. I like him. Um, I'm excited to see what we get from him, especially when you put him in a room with uh, Chris Kosurik. So um, definitely definitely not the big name that that we're looking for. Uh, or hoping for like a Daniil Hunter, right? But hey, I think this guy, I like what I see. I like what I see, and he seems like a great person. And I think that's huge. Uh, so we'll see how it goes from there. But so far, Yeetor, Yeet, Yeet, YGM. I was going to call him YGM. Um I like it so far. I like it so far. So that's pretty much a recap of today, day one. Um, let's talk. Let's talk offensive line. Um, I think. I think. Uh, what was it? Robert Hunt went for a hundred million. Uh, Onwenu. Resigned with the Patriots. 49ers brought back. I mean, they extended McKibbitz. Resigned Ben Barch. Uh, I'm waiting for the Feliciano hire, to be honest. Um, I think if you can get if you can get Feliciano back, um, 
that would be huge because he fills so many roles. He's he can literally play all three spots on the interior offensive line and start um and play at a high level. So I would like to see Feliciano back. Um but interior offensive line could also put potentially be addressed in the draft i think that's the other thing is like if there's anything that we've seen from the 49ers i don't know if they want to spend big in free agency um on that position obviously they re-signed trent williams to a big deal they were able to extend um jake brendel they got McKivitz back on a value. Uh, most likely, they probably could uh, address interior offensive line in the draft if uh, if they bring back Feliciano and they want to address dress O line in the draft. That could absolutely be a possibility. Um, I just don't see the 49ers spending big cash on offensive line. Um, I, I've quietly said it all along, and I know it's not popular at all, but I do see a world that exists where the 49ers offensive line heading into training camp is Trent Williams, Banks, Brendel, Feliciano, and McKivitz. Um to me, that was the most realistic outcome because, like I said, I don't see the 49ers spending big in free agency. And the best that they're going to do is draft. But there's also no guarantee that an offensive tackle at 31 is going to beat out McKivitz. Um, I think you have a better shot at creating competition at guard um with a guard center hybrid like a graham barton um but outside of that i don't know you could just push offensive line you could just push offensive line to like the third round fourth round and i know no singular person wants to hear this and i recognize that but again, part of what I do is scout the 49ers. And uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh, no! Dang. 49ers Javon Kinlaw has reached a one-year deal with the New York Jets. Oh. Hey, I, on a side note, that's my guy, so I'm happy for him. I'm happy, you know, he gets another shot. Uh, likely going to be a prove-it deal, uh, especially with the change of scenery. But dang, man. Kinlaw, dude. Kinlaw had quietly a really good season for the 49ers. I know he's not a popular Niner. I know I know a lot of people have beef with him because of where he was drafted and, and how he was hurt and stuff. Um, but he had a good he had a good year and it's like first full season of being like really healthy. Man, that stinks. Javon Kinlaw to a one-year deal per Adam Schefter. The Jets have signed defensive tackle. Bear with me while we get some posts out. The, 40, the Jets have signed, not the 49ers. The Jets. Just want to make sure I got that right. Reach an agreement on one year deal with the Jets. 
Dang it. And again, I I don't like that because I would have loved to have Javon back. Especially with Eric being out. Damn. Uh, I wonder, though, could could Eric Armstead, Javon Kinlaw reunite? Reunite in New York? All right. All right. I thought that was, I was like, oh, he's resigning. He's, he's resigning. Let's go. Oh, no. He's a jet. <laughs> he's Javon Kinlaw is. Oh, no. He's a jet. Damn it. Hey, shout out to my guy, though. I got nothing. I got nothing but love for Javon Kinlaw, man. That dude's super cool. Super cool, bro. When I when I when I ran into him on opening night at the Super Bowl, uh just dap me up. Uh, all smiles, happy to see me, dude. Dude, I love Javon, man. Javon's such a dope person. I think he just gets a bad rap, but Kinlaw gone. Javon Kinlaw, if you're just joining, just signed a one-year deal with the New York Jets. Bittersweet for me. Bittersweet for me. Um, obviously, we know the history there. Um 49ers traded uh, traded the Forrest Buckner for pick 13. 49ers traded down one pick uh, with the Bucks. That pick that they traded out of turned into Tristan Worse. 49ers take Javon Kinlaw. Four years later, Javon Kinlaw is now a Jet. Uh, and he is going to go play with Robert Sala. So, again, I I got nothing bad to say about, about Kinlaw. Kinlaw is my guy. Um, that, that's my guy. Genuinely, genuine happiness to see Javon Kinlaw have success um, from me. So, um even even if it's with another team, to be honest with you, like uh, that's how much I, I rock with Kinlaw. Um, hey, if if it means going and and proving it one more year, and then turn that one year into the bag, hey man, do what you gotta do. Um, I feel it. So, man, uh, they probably got him for a steal too. Oh, uh, they probably got him for a stupid steal. Um, I want to see those numbers. What are those? No what do we lose Javon Kinlaw for? How much? Pain. That's my guy. That's my guy. <sighs> see the i think this is a problem for me is because i know you guys a lot of you guys you root for the name on the front you root for the decal on the side and i do as well i mean look at around look at around it's nothing but niner stuff but i always i always root for these players to the point where I almost default to player first at times. Um, I don't know if that's because I used to play and I love the game and like a part of me still associates mentally with being a player and everything they got to go through and all the shit they get, um, whether right or wrong. Um, I don't know, man. I, I, I appreciate what these guys do for us on a, on a deeper level of just you go out, you wear my team's jersey, and you, you make football plays. Um, and Javon's one of those guys that, you know, been riding with Javon since the beginning, man. 
Um, Javon was one of my first like big time player interviews on YouTube. Um, and he was a great interview, great interview. Um, very generous with his time, um, and, and a vibe. Uh, so bummer. I'm bummed by that one. I'm bummed. Um, that's, that's my dog. Um, so oh, I, I, I would have preferred, I would have felt better if I saw like a multi-year deal <laughs> to be like, all right, he got the bag. He got the bag. Go get your bag, man. Go, you go, you go get paid. I, I am always a big proponent in that. Uh, but I'm like, damn, I hope it's not. I hope it's not just a one, like a prove it. Cause I'm like, damn, come back, prove it. Come back, prove it with us, my boy. <laughs> uh, I got to figure out what he got paid. That's kind of eating at me. Like, what did, what did you get paid? Damn. Damn it. Happy for him, but damn it. So you, you know what that means. That means the 49ers are going to be going after more defensive line. Are you ready for that? Are you ready for that? That means the 49ers are going to be going after more defensive line. Just saying. Just saying. Uh all that good stuff, man. <laughs> so I just saw a comment come across on IG that says Brad must not pay attention to comments on IG. I'm trying my best, but just to, for contextual reference, I have like 174 people watching on Instagram. I have over 1,700 people watching on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Twitter, and uh, Twitch while my phone is going berserk and I'm posting online. So I'm not going to be able to read every single person's comment. I would love to. And again, the best way for me in these settings to get comments read or super chats uh outside of that i'm like uh i'm like a german shepherd with straight up adhd just hopping around all over the place speaking of that i think i missed this super chat from boxing fan no i think i talked about this one see i don't even know i don't even know um so again, if you're just joining, Javon Kinlaw is a jet. Uh and we are down another defensive lineman. Damn it. Damn it. Oh pain. Pain, 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 pain. Do we play the Jets this year? I think we played the Jets this year. So, you know, I'm really curious to see what he got paid something tells me like just my gut just my gut is like i think he wanted a fresh start especially especially with uh no eric armstead in the building um i don't know i don't wonder if he just wanted a fresh start but what watch uh watch eric join the new york jets as well um i'm 
So, defensive line continues to be a top need <laughs> for the San Francisco 49ers. If that isn't abundantly clear already. Um, all right. So, our current defensive tackles under contract are Javon Hargrave. Also, Kaliah Davis. That's it. Those are our defensive tackles as it currently stands right now. Two. Two. Javon Hargrave and Kaliah Davis. So... If if it real if push really comes to shove, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll line up in the one tech. I'll do my best to try to take on double teams. I cannot guarantee a single thing will be any good. But if you need a body that is completely broken down and can't do anything and out of shape, and you just want to plug in the a gap, hey, call me up. Call me up. I'll do absolutely nothing for you. Um, but hey, come through. Come through. I'll get absolutely crumpled um, by anyone I face. But uh, feel free to hit my line. Uh, you know, <laughs> what's the worst that can happen? What's the worst that can happen? Um but it sounds like uh, open tree outs, open tree outs uh, for the 49ers new uh, defensive tackles position. Uh, let's just do a quick search. Let me let me search it up. What 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 are the free agent defensive tackles looking like right now? Let me just search it up. Re hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Uh, what are our what's our defensive tackle class looking like? Christian Wilkins signed, Grover Stewart signed, Justin Jones signed, Greg Gaines, Maurice Hurst signed. That's not updated yet. Um, is DJ Reader signed? Uh, DJ Reader, potentially DJ Jones, obviously, but he is still on a roster. Um, do you remember that DJ Jones is still on the Broncos. He's not, he hasn't been released yet. So I don't think DJ Jones is a target until he's released. All right. So DJ Reader's not signed that that wouldn't be bad. That wouldn't be bad. Um, Sheldon Rankins. Tyre Tart. Maybe. Uh, yeah. uh, hey. Kevin Givens, come through. I'm a, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need Kevin Givens to re up. Uh, I wanted Mo. I really wanted Mo Hurst back. I really legitimately wanted the 49ers to go out and get Mo Hurst back, but he resigned with the Cleveland Browns today. So pain there. Um. Yeah, there's not a lot of options. There's not a lot of options at all. Uh, so like I said, Niners hit the line. Uh, I'll I'll wear one of the helmets that I have behind me. You don't have to give me any equipment. I'll just stand there, be a, a glorified uh, blocking dummy. Uh, but yeah, we need bodies. We need bodies on that defensive line room. 
Uh, right now, DJ Reader would be the best available option. Uh, outside of that, it's pretty. It's pretty gross. It's pretty gross. That's why I was hopeful that Kinlaw would be back. But now it, you might have to definitely bring Givens back. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens here. 49ers got some decisions to make, though. 49ers got some decisions to make. Uh, and defensive line continues to be a top need. Uh, I still think they need maybe one more edge, but it sounds like they need at minimum three to four more. Three to four more defensive tackles into your tackles. <laughs> My guy says, breaking news, the San Francisco 49ers will be releasing the SF Niners, Brad. You heard it here. You heard it here first per sauces. I have been released. Um, I have been released actually uh, just coming in per Adam Schefter. Uh, prior to the release, we actually have a sign and trade. It appears... Brad of the SF Niners has signed a 16-year, $400 million contract with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Let's go. Let's go. Schefter with the scoop. First guy in the chat had it, though. First guy in the chat had it. Uh, but then we got scooped by Shefty and breaking sign and trade. I will now be a Bucks content creator. Um, from now on, so uh, Baker Mayfield, Mike Evans, hey, Rashad White, that's my guy, Rashad White, let's go. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um, yeah, we got some stuff to figure out. We got some stuff to figure out. We're not going to figure it out today. Um, but if there are any other additional moves that go down, I might be coming back live, uh, just to say what's up. I am exhausted. However, um, I feel like I've been going nonstop since like seven this morning and something tells me there are still moves to be made. Dang it. So I'll be up, um, but I'll come on live if something crazy goes down. I mean, I got, I see almost 1,800 people in the chat on, on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. I don't know what platform you guys are all watching on, but if you could do me a solid, and go to my YouTube channel, VSF Niners, smash that sub button, and we always go live on YouTube. I don't always spread it out to Twitter and Instagram, but if you're watching on YouTube, go to YouTube, smash that, smash that sub button. You already know the vibes. I got my IG and YouTubers, all that good stuff. Uh, but yeah, we'll be back on for more stuff, uh, especially especially if stuff drops. My YouTube is the SF Niners. Same thing, all platforms. You know the vibes. Smash that like button on your way out. Sub to the channel if you haven't already. Shout out to all the SDS. Hey, day one. Oh, I see some some people making the great migration to YouTube already. Let's go, Ethan. Um, so, like I said, we're going to go live pretty much anytime any big moves drop. We're going live. 
Uh, we're 100 percent always live on YouTube. Uh, that's where if you want to catch the lives, we're always going live there. Um, but regardless, I'll see you guys around. Shout out to everyone. Appreciate y'all. I'm out of here for now. Peace. Smash that like button if you haven't already. Love to see.